Please be aware this film contains conversations about suicide. It wasn't one big thing with my dad, it was lots of little things over lots of years that, that, that broke him, I think. When someone's gone, you you have to find that new normal. You know, my dad could never do that now. I think that was half of his problem. My dad loved the outdoors. He loved fishing, he loved doing that, like a bit of course, and he loved he loved the countryside. He, we used to go fishing, didn't often catch stuff. <laughs> it was just about the time together. He came from a hard household. He tried his best to not give us that environment, but sometimes it crept through, you know. And he wasn't a bad man, he was just complicated. As we grew up, we became very close. He was a lot of fun and he suffered a few personal tragedies himself. He really, really did do his best. He, he did struggle with it, but he did his best. And then on the morning of the 20th of February, 2020, he was found hanged. He was a good boy. He was kind, caring. He loved his daughter. He loved her so much. The light of his life. Near where he was living, in that field, there's cows. He used to walk up there a lot with her. In his mind, that wasn't a bad place. That was somewhere nice that he took his daughter. Maybe that place gave him comfort. He was a plasterer, and he was really good at it. Every day, he would drive in. And even if he didn't get out of his van, he'd just sit in his van, smoking, but we'd see him every day. She's just like him. She brightens our lives, to be honest. It's a little part of him still left. I've got photographs of him standing at the gate. Literally over that gate is where he died. He didn't ring me that night. He had his phone and he didn't ring me. And I just don't understand why he didn't, because he knows I would have gone to him. As a family, we're destroyed. Nothing is the same, nothing will ever be the same. There are no words to describe losing Jimmy. As a family, there are none. It's, a, it's a, a permanent ache. So still we sit and we watch that gate and we know he's not coming, but that doesn't stop us. The Gypsies and Travellers are very proud people and they're a very close-knit community. I think it's certainly culturally still a stigma. I know of families that have suffered six or seven suicides within the family. The family think it's an awful shame on them because they think it's bad parenting or it's there somehow to uh, blame for her, for what their kids are doing or for people taking their lives. Men have always been seen as the head of the family, as the macho kind of figure. They don't like speaking about their issues. They don't even like going to GPs, to be honest, and they never really seek help until it's probably too late. And it's still like that today. I know it sounds old fashioned, but it's the way that uh, their parents have been brought up and the generation before them. If anything goes wrong, you look to the man, you look to the husband, you look to the dad. Nobody can keep that up all the time. Showing an emotion can be seen as a weakness and we're in a mindset where you have to be strong, you have to be able to fight and you have to be able to provide. A lot of people feel that they'll be outcast if they can't do that. It's a really big issue and it needs addressing. We're making them feel that they can't reach out, they can't ask for that help, they can't say, look, I'm really feeling a bit down because what will we say? I'll pull yourself together. That's how I've been brought up. What Jim went through in them final minutes before he died. Nobody should have to go through that. Nobody should feel that the only option is to die. I, I truly don't think he realised what he was leaving behind. How much pain was he in? We're so close-knit of a community that uh, everybody kind of knows everybody. Where do you go outside of that community? There is no shame, no shame at all. It's strong, it's powerful to admit that you're struggling and you need help. I just think it's important for people to come out and talk if they're struggling because my dad didn't. When there are opportunities to save him, he didn't take them. If you get over the fear and, and you're, you're proud of where you come from, you can change people's perception on a personal level. Sometimes it takes a while for people to open up. They might know you, they might know some of your family and they don't always want to speak. But if you encourage them and have open days like coffee mornings and things like that, where the women can speak to each other, like peer support 
have peer support for people. I think that's a way of getting it out there and getting people to talk about it. As a travelling community, we need to pull together and we need to hold that hand out to that person on their knees. Not make fun of them, help them. Hold the hand out and help them up. What I would give for our son to have fought that way, but he didn't. In his mind, his only option was to take his own life. That wasn't his only option. His option was to reach out to someone and say, I'm struggling. When I was younger, we weren't ashamed of where we come from, but sometimes feel like we would have to cover it up for fear of persecution. In the past, I've hid that I'm a traveller because I was afraid I wouldn't get a job. A lot of the travelling communities are still very insular. They don't take advice from outside. So that, that also needs to change. People in mainstream don't understand their issues, don't understand their culture. So we have got to get that right first before people will open up to uh, mainstream services. We always hear this thing about gypsies and travellers won't engage with us. Um, sometimes it's the other way around. Gypsies and travellers are crying out for help and support, but um, don't know how to uh, access that support. Because mental health has been seen as something to be ashamed of for so many years and be kind of hidden away. We wouldn't let someone step in and rearrange everything anyway, so yes. The traveller community have to pull together. A traveller is a traveller. We're born travellers. It's in our DNA. We are what we are. A settled person cannot talk to a traveller the way another traveller can. We need someone of our own language, someone that they feel comfortable with. And then maybe, you know, they'll let it out. They'll release whatever it is holding them down. We decided that we were going to ask the question around mental health and suicide. It was never asked before and, and we thought that the best people that should come from was ourselves, gypsies and travellers, especially the elders. We had a lot of uh, interest in it and a lot of people wanted to speak. Um, I think they just needed a push for somebody to stand up and uh, start talking about it. We as parents need to be opening up, speaking to our children, starting communications with them if we see that they're suffering in any way. We're seeing more and more young people die by suicide. We've always had suicide within the male side of the community. More recently, I would say within the last five years, there's been more and more young girls. It's still a taboo subject and people don't like speaking about it. Um, but I think they've realised over the last five, ten years that the amount of suicides that um, happen within our community, that something needs to happen, something needs to change. We got picked on at school. You can't show fear. If you show fear, you get eaten up. That's the way it goes throughout your whole life. And a lot of people will take emotion as weakness. Luckily, my children don't suffer that sort of persecution. The schools that they go to are run very well. Bullying is tackled immediately. If you think that someone in your family has ill mental health or suffering, maybe you don't have to say it to them straight. You can say, come on, let's go for a walk, because you don't want to make them feel ashamed, but there's other ways you can do it. Just for a little while, you can forget about the bills that are coming in or stress that's going on. If you've got a friend you haven't heard from for a while, send them a text, how you doing? You all right? If you're active and you're outdoors, it takes your mind off of the issues that are troubling you. I always feel good after I've exercised. It was barbecues and sitting out outside the trailer, you know. We had a gardening project where we got a lot of the women out and the women really loved going up there just to get together and meet one another. And it was a chance and a space for them to open up and speak to one another. People have got to understand and accept that there are mental health issues. I need to learn the lessons that my dad didn't learn to be able to move on and teach my kids that lesson as well. We have to do this. The traveling community have to do this ourselves. Save our young men, our young women. If you're frightened to talk to someone that you know, then talk to someone that you don't know. Remember, talking can help. You're not alone. Helplines include one call away 077 48 99 7617, Samaritans 116 123, Herefordshire and Worcestershire Urgent Mental Health Helpline 08. 08 196 9127